Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to look at two D-Link IP cameras that I'm going to attach to my Home Assistant home automation system. I find configuring these cameras to be excruciatingly painful. They never seem to be just as easy as they describe. All you have to do is, well that doesn't work. The video is a little long as I'm going into a fair bit of detail that you may not be interested in. If uh, you get bored just by all means exit out. The video might be helpful to some people that are trying to configure these D-Link cameras for use in home automation. IP cameras can differ from one another in resolution, features, encoding, uh, and available network protocols and API for the video management software. That's pretty much rated of Wikipedia. Two common ones are OnVIF, which is the Open Network Video Interface Forum, and PSIA, which is Physical Security Interoperability Alliance. I don't need either of these standards for my needs right now. I'm going to be using a stream. It's going to be going into a network video recorder. The software is called MotionEye. It will also be recording to a local micro SD card. And here we go. Well, after reviewing this video, it turned out it was quite long. So for those that are not that interested in Home Assistant using IP cameras, the overview is first I unbox the cameras. Then I configure those cameras onto Wi-Fi. After they're attached to my Wi-Fi network, I then work on Home Assistant. I add them into MotionEye, and then finally I add it to the UI Lovelace YAML file. If you're interested in the YAML files, take a look in the comments below. I've left uh, both the camera.yaml entries and the UI underscore Lovelace YAML entry down below. And now on with the show. Just received a couple of CCTVs on Kijiji. The first is a D-Link 180 degree wide eye. Has free local recording. My D-Link Wi-Fi. I'm going to interrupt myself here. The My D-Link Wi-Fi is important because that allows you to set up the device prior to attaching it to your network. What it does is it creates a small hotspot, like an access point, where your phone can attach to it, and you can configure the SSID and password of your home network. Once you've done that, you can use your router to find the IP address, or you can set a static IP address and then just attach to it using a browser. Once you're in the browser, you can change all the settings of the camera, and then you can easily incorporate it in your uh, NVR software. It is a model DCS2530. And let's see what's inside the box. Quick install card, manual, and the unit. A nice box. It's been packaged very nicely. And as usual, you need to have an engineering degree to open the box. Like an AC adapter. Camera and a couple of mounting screws. Now the trouble that we've got is I know a fair bit about networking, a fair bit about electronics, and a fair bit about programming. I don't know an awful lot about the CCTV stuff. I know there's OnVIF and I know the other standards, but I don't know exactly how to set this all up within Home Assistant and I'm going to let you follow me along as I figure out how to do it. Let's take a look at the other box. The other box is a D-Link again. It has my D-Link Wi-Fi. It's HD and outdoor ready. This this was the important thing for me. I don't have any outside cameras. I do have 
cameras throughout the house and I always struggle to try and figure out how to put them together. Comes with a start here card. This one comes with an ethernet card with a, I believe they call this a gland or a grommet to go into the case to make it watertight. We've got the camera, AC adapter, a pivoting head to mount, and a mounting plate. Okay, we've seen what, what we've got. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the D-Link website to see what's going on for this DCS2530L. Click on the product. I believe this is uh, an older product. How do I set up install using the app? So we need to install my D-Link app onto your phone, add a camera, pick the model, looks like then you want to connect up to it using their password and their username. For the Wi-Fi network. Uh, once you're connected then you can assign an IP address. Now one interesting thing that you should be doing is keeping a spreadsheet of your IP addresses on your home network. You very quickly get quite a few devices on your network when you're doing home automation. It's really easy to get confused or forget which ones are where. If you make an IP address lookup chart you can very quickly find out what device is at what address. I usually assign them in groups, so I've got a group for my cameras, a group for my printers. Uh, it makes it so much easier. Then you can create static IP addressing, which makes it easier for when you're doing SSH into the devices or upgrades when you want to do a wireless update. Okay, I've got the AC adapter. Plugged in, it is a micro USB connection. And it plugs in the back, well, the bottom of the unit. Just like that. LED comes on. You hear a click. There's the SD card slot. So that's powered up. We'll leave that there. The quick install card says we download the My D Link Lite and then we follow the directions and then assign the uh, Wi Fi information. So I've installed the My D Link Lite. And we're going to add a new camera. You have to have the Wi-Fi setting turned on, which I thought it was. Okay, if in doubt, RTFM. This is here. If your camera is still not working, uh, you may want to reset it. Reset is not the button. There's actually a small port. Press and hold. We've now reset the camera. It's solid red. Red on the front. Okay, we have here the D-Link 2530L. According to this quick start guide, all you have to do is turn it on and attach to its hotspot and then you should be able to configure it through the app. That did not work. I tried resetting it. 
Resetting it is done through this little port here. You put a little pin in there. I've tried pressing and holding this button. I read the freaking manual. Nothing worked. So finally I resorted to an old trick. I just went into my phone, found out what Wi-Fi it was attached to, which was this. Found out what its IP address was, which was 10.255.255.100. So then I took a web browser on my phone and I went to 10.255.255.1, which is this. And I was able to configure it from there. So now I've got it configured. I'll assign a static IP address and then we can continue with the Home Assistant setup. But so far this has been a major PETA. If you didn't know what you were doing with networking, there's no way you could use this. That's probably why the guy sold it. He couldn't figure it out. We're going to set up the outside camera. It's a D-Link camera. On the back I've removed this little plate. The plate covers the micro SD card. Micro SD card is tricky to get out. Right now I've got a 32 gig card in there. In order to get access to the power connection, we have to remove these screws. These little rubber caps were there to keep the water out. You can use power over Ethernet or PoE on these devices. Now we've got the AC adapter. Plug that in. And we'll plug this one in. We've got power. One would assume that we press and hold this to reset it. I haven't read the manual yet. Okay. I'm going to try the outdoor camera. I tried to set it up using Wi-Fi. I didn't have any luck with that. So I've connected the power up. I've connected a network cable to my network. In order to access that port, you have to take this little panel off. It has a little gasket on it to keep the water out. So right now I've connected it to my network. I've gone to my router. It came up under DHCP as .180. So I've gone to the web page. The username is admin and there is no password. So now I can go in, set up the Wi-Fi for this camera to my Wi-Fi network and assign an a static IP address. So that's what I'll do now and I'll be back after that's done. The tricky part is over. I have this device plugged into power, flashing green light. It's now configured to my Wi-Fi. Everything seems to be functioning properly. I've got a static IP address on it so now I can configure it within Home Assistant. For those of you that aren't familiar with Home Assistant, Home Assistant can be found at home-assistant.io. It can run on hardware as small as a Raspberry Pi. It can run in a virtual machine. It can run on a dedicated server. It is, I believe, based on Python. If you go to the Home Assistant website, it will show you this page. And there is a really interesting page called View Demo. It shows you what the Home Assistant environment looks like. It is all based on a web page, so it's very easy to configure. It uses a, a package called Lovelace to display this uh, quite nice page. In the demo, if you click on the different things, it will show you what you would get in a normal situation. So you can see charts. You can see where people are. There's maps, there's kitchen lights that you can turn on and off. Uh, it's a very user-friendly, user-modifiable, unique package. It integrates a ton of different generic manufacturers. So you don't have to write code 
just because you want to add something new. You just add it into Home Assistant. Once we have the cameras configured, we need to go into Home Assistant and install a pro program called MotionEye. To do that, on the left-hand side, you go to Supervisor, Add-ons, and the add-on that you want to install is MotionEye. In this case, I've already got it installed, so we don't have to worry about that. Motion Eye is right here. Once we're logged into Motion Eye, drop down for network camera, put in the URL of the stream, your credentials, admin, and the password. It will then go out on the network and find that, is in this case, it's an MJPEG network camera. Click OK. It now goes out and queries it. It finds it. It's calling it camera 7. I don't want camera 7. I want to call it something different. I'm going to call it D-Link 5. D-Link 5. And we're going to save that. Once you have the camera set up for the network so that it attaches to your Wi-Fi and is configured for the proper IP address, you want to click on the Network Setup tab on the left scroll down to RTSP because we need to know the type of authentication in this case it's digest the port which is a standard is 554 but we really need to know the live1.sdb that's going to be used in our camera.yaml so that we can have access to the live stream now that we have the RTSP information from the camera definition we can now start to create the entity within Home Assistant in camera.yaml. For instance, here is one that is a platform generic. The name is D-Link Cam 5. This is the URL that we are using for static in images. But this is the one of interest, the stream source. It gives you the RTSP, the username and the password, IP address, slash live one S DP. We don't need the SSL, but we do need to tell it that it's using Digest. Once we've defined the cameras in camera.yaml, save it and then reset the server. The server will then reload the camera.yaml file and be ready for our next step. The next step is going to be editing uilovelace.yaml. We're going to create a card. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm putting the cards in my basement uh, tab. The reason for that is that's where I'm working right now. The cards are a picture glance. I've called it D-Link outside. I'm using D-Link camera 6. And the next one is a D-Link inside using D-Link camera 5. Once those are configured within the UI Lovelace file, it will show up on your file in your um, screen. After saving the YAML files and restarting the server, here's what we get for the basement. You can see that we've got some badges. There's the basement tab. Here is D-Link outside, which is sitting right here. This is D-Link inside sitting right here. I've got a camera which is looking at the uh, the rather messy setup because I've been pretty busy today. But you can see that it is uh, showing you fairly static. It's not updated frequently. However, this is the cool thing about the RTSP. When you click on it, bingo, yep, up it comes. Now we've got a live feed. 
It's a slight delay, but it is live. You can see my fingers now. I find that very useful. That wraps up our IP camera configuration using Motion Eye and Home Assistant. I'm sorry the video took so long, but it's a rather convoluted process to set up the camera, get it enabled on your network, tie it into Motion Eye, and then have it display in Home Assistant. Thanks again for watching. If you found this valuable, hit the thumbs up. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you liked it, maybe subscribe. Thank you.